Morning, everybody. Pastor Ken. And Mike. Glad to come your way this morning on this beautiful morning. Actually, our taping is inside today, and we'll be broadcasting this live to you on uh, on Friday and Saturday. And uh, But uh, we're doing it inside because it's a little foggy. It's a whole lot foggy and pretty wet out there. So uh, here we are. And I uh, hope you had a good evening, and I hope you're ready for a great day. Remember, God's good. And he's on the throne and he cares about everything that you're going through today. He really does. He knows what you're going through. He loves you and he wants the very best for you. He really does. But in this world full of sin, we have situations. And here's Brother Mike to start off our conversation. And uh, this is for new Christians to help you grow. Well, thank you very much. You know, the last... Um Two times we were together, we talked about choices, and it seems appropriate now that we begin to talk about some individual situations where we can apply what we've learned in choices. Mm -hmm. And the last couple of days, the Lord has laid in my heart that we should probably talk about adversity. Yeah, I, I, I think adversity is almost like the rain. It just falls on everyone. It does. The Bible says that. The Bible <clears throat> says God reigns on the just and the unjust, that's scripture. Rains on the just and the unjust. And uh, you know, when we think about the rain, just like the rain last night, some people just got a little sprinkle and that would have been a light adversity and other people had a raging storm. And, and we get through that in this life. Next time it comes through, guess what? We could be the ones getting the storm and you could get the sprinkle, right? Absolutely. God's not picking on people, is he? Mike? No, no. You know, it, it's yeah. kind of kind of interesting. Sometimes when people get into worst adversity, they say, "Why me? Why does a loving God allow this to happen right. to me?" And it's not fair. But uh, there's a, a great example of a man that had unbelievable adversity in Second uh, Corinthians, where Paul talks about all of his uh, beatings and. All the stuff that he went through, and Paul was such a great man got for the Lord. There. You want to read that? What, would that be all right? Do you oh. mind? No, <clears throat> I don't mind at all. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, Paul says, Are they servants of Christ? Am I speaking as if insane? I'm more so, in far more labors, in far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've spent adrift at the sea. I've been on frequent journeys in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers. I've been in labor and hardships through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. Apart from such external things, there is the daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. We, or excuse me, who is weak without my being weak? Who is led into sin without my intense concern? Mm -hmm. Paul was just pelleted with yes, struggles. Was. That's a good word too. I'd just, say that was having a bad day. <laughs> that'd make you want to go to heaven real quick, wouldn't it? Wow, yes. Well, and I think that's a perfect lead-in to what you said. Want to make you go to heaven. You know, I, I had, as I was praying about this and thinking about this, two different men in my life came to mind, um, and they're from the past, long ago. But both had a similar adversity. Someone in their family whom they loved very much, they watched suffer and struggle and suffer and struggle mm -hmm. until they died. And both men took a different path on how they handled adversity. Mm -hmm. The one man turned to anger and malice and rage and bitterness, caused division in his family, and I don't know that he ever had a joyful day after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. The other man, he was, he was a neighbor of mine, and when I'd stop in to see him, he would often fall asleep at his table and his head would be laying on his open Bible. It, even in his aged years, he would go minister to other people. He'd go help other people. But he knew that his home was That's not right. here. That's right. So his hope was in something far greater. You know, Mike, there's a word in the Bible that uh, has always intrigued me. Uh, 
the word is overcometh. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Well, now, the Lord knows that if we were going to have an adversity, that word overcoming would not even have to, to be in there. Absolutely. You know, I remember when I used to be into wrestling in high school. Um, I'm not sure where this statement came from, but uh, I, I took it on as my own. I'm either up or getting up all the time. I'm either up or getting up all the time. And in the Christian life, nobody promises it's a cakewalk. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, but we're not... We're, you don't get into Christianity just to have a, a an easier way. That's not the purpose of getting into Christianity. It's to save your soul. I mean, uh, you know, to make a choice between going to heaven or hell, uh, to accept the free gift of salvation that Jesus gave you. That's why you get saved. It For many, many years, I raised as a kid, I would hear people say, as soon as someone gets saved, they say, well, how does that feel? And, and I feel like saying, what does it matter? Right. It doesn't have a thing to do with it. Tomorrow that new Christian's going to go out and, and face the real world. He may have more adversity than what he had before, but now he's got the power inside of him. Well, absolutely. The, the new Christian, even us people that have been in the faith, we have this hope now that this is not the end. Here is not the end. And these pain and suffering. I mean, just when you recited that the rain falls and the just as the unjust, the adversities are going to fall whether you're Christian or not For Christian. Sure. And there's no way around that. That's life. And this path allows us to have this hope, just what you preached on Sunday on John three sixteen. I mean, God allowed his own son to die yeah. and to be tortured and beaten yeah. and crucified. Mm -hmm. So we should not expect anything mm -hmm. less. But he gave us that, and, and I love how you said that on Sunday, everlasting life. For everlasting sure. life yes sir and that's our hope mm -hmm. so this adversity it's going to come yeah what else you got there mike well i you know i was <clears throat> looking at um proverbs 3 5 and 6 it's an, another pair of verses i just absolutely love the trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding because when these adversities come mm -hmm. my common sense says why how? How do I get out of this? What caused it? Whose fault is it? Let's think this through. Let's see if we can't find <clears> out. <throat> let's diagnose this. Let's, let's take this to the to the scientific table and diagnose this. And uh, um, many, many things, and, you know, there's not a human answer for yeah. you, you. You know, Charlotte's got a little saying that she says once in a while. Uh, what was it, huh? Lesson are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> We've had lots of things to <clears throat> bend us on the shape, but you, you just got to dig down deep inside and kneel mm -hmm. at the cross and, and stay in the Word of God. And I, so many times I think of that verse that says, this too shall pass. Uh, we're not in the middle of the storm to stay. We're just passing through this. We storm. are. Yeah, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And there's a secret, too. It's doing it with your whole heart. Not just showing up, but, right. I mean, really apply. You know, in work, work ethic. <clears throat> you know, you can have one guy show up, and he's doing the work of three guys, and somebody else is leaning on a shovel. You know what I'm saying? I do, I do. You know. <laughs> and I think that uh, all our heart means all the time. Yeah. Whether you're at home at the dinner table or you're at work sure. or whatever you may be doing, whatever task or whatever ad, uh, adversity comes in your life. You know, the, the second half of those verses says, in all your ways, acknowledge him mm -hmm. and he'll make your path straight. Yep. So after you, when we get in that adversity, acknowledging God, you know, I, I just had one of those this morning in the wee hours, I got awake and some of the things of life were rolling in my head and I began to acknowledge God and pray mm -hmm. and, and recite some verses that I knew and the next thing I was back to sleep. Yes, that's how I do the same thing. <clears throat> because the enemy comes to try to get you to take a crooked path. That's what that is saying. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what the scripture says when it's giving you a positive, just think of what the reversal of that is. Absolutely. You know, and the reversal is that the enemy wants to give you a crooked path. But the Lord says, if you do this, you'll have a straight path. You'll have a I'll make your path. I'll make your path straight. They may not be straight now, but I'll make them straight. I'm working on your on your behalf. I'm in the construction business. I, I got a big bulldozer. I got a big grader. I'll make your path straight. 
Amen. 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 Kind of. Thank you, Jesus. He left his throne in glory to come to earth as mortal man and grew up a simple carpenter. Oh, he was the great I am. He was mocked, betrayed, and found guilty in spite of all the facts. And he walked the way of sorrow.